Hi, and welcome to our video for our course, Plant Responses to Environmental Stresses and Global Climate Change. Today we'll be talking about flooding stress in rice. Gabby will introduce us to the topic and talk about the end end rule. Then Elise will take over and discuss how plants adapt to flooding and some responses they have. Alice will detail where plants get the energy to respond to flooding. And Yuxin will wrap it up by discussing how farmers can protect their crops. Let's get to it. Today we will be talking about how plants respond to being drowned. We all know that plants need water, but too much water, like in the case of root water logging or partial or complete plant flooding, means that they have limited access to oxygen since they are no longer exposed to as much air. Without oxygen, it becomes difficult for plants to photosynthesize and grow. The lack of sufficient oxygen for normal respiration levels is known as hypoxia, while the point at which respiration is forced to stop completely is anoxia. There are two main physical responses that plants can have to flood stress. One is the snorkel response, which, as its name implies, involves the plant stretching above the water surface to reach air. Seeds will usually choose this response, but mature plants can also increase their growth rate in order to act as a snorkel. The second response is called quiescence, which is when the plant might slow down its metabolic activities and growth as much as possible so that it can survive under the water in the hopes that the flood will pass. You can probably already think of some of the pros and cons of each method, especially when it comes to how long a flood can last. How can plants tell when their soil is flooded? The answer to this question follows a pathway called the N-end rule because it takes place at the N end of an ERF, or ethylene responsive transcription factor, which is a protein that's dependent on ethylene. In normal conditions, oxygen prevents proteins involved in flooding stress responses from being produced in the plant. This is because oxygen allows arginine to bind to the cysteine already on the protein, and the combination of arginine and cysteine marks the ERF for degradation by a proteasome. Without oxygen, the N end remains unoxidized, and is therefore not marked for degradation. This means that it's the lack of oxygen that initiates a plant's response to flooding rather than the water itself. I'm sure you can picture a rice paddy with plants half submerged in water. For rice, the most common practice is for growers to germinate the seed elsewhere and plant the seedlings in the field where when they are already established. In recent years, however, a shortage of labor has caused many rice farmers to seed rice directly in the field, so it's important that they have varieties that can germinate under flooded conditions. Of all the cereal crops, rice is the most tolerant to flooding, thanks to a couple of physiological aspects. First of all, rice seeds store most of their energy in starch rather than fatty acids. Rice seedlings germinate with all the enzymes that they need to break down starch. One of the most important is alpha amylase, an enzyme that helps break down starch into carbohydrates that are easily fermentable and can be used in anaerobic respiration. This helps them gain the energy they need to germinate and grow. One amazing feature of rice and other flood-tolerant plants is that it has something called arenchyma in the roots. These are special channels in the parenchyma layer that travel through the root and all the way up the shoot. This lets air travel from the top of the plant all the way to the bottom, like a snorkel. In order to pre prevent this air from being lost out the sides of the plant, there is a waterproof barrier made of lignin and suberin on the outside of the root. Another result of submergence underwater is the accumulation of the gaseous hormone ethylene, which builds up because gases diffuse slowly through water compared to air. Plants can respond to ethylene in a variety of ways depending on genetic background, cellular energy, O2 levels, and other factors. In some flooding-tolerant varieties of rice, increased ethylene leads to expression of ERF sub-1, a gene that suppresses growth to initiate the quiescence response. In other species, ethylene leads to the expression of snorkel genes, which cause the plant to elongate. There are two ways that the growing plant can elongate, cell division and cell expansion. Since cell division requires more energy, the plant will favor cell expansion whenever possible. The snorkel genes lead to downregulation of peroxidase, which is involved in holding cell walls tightly together, which restricts elongation, and the upregulation of expansins. These are proteins that loosen cell walls by breaking the bonds between cellulose microfibrils. This allows the cells to expand, 
Snorkel genes also upregulate gibberellin, another plant hormone, that increases production of our old friend alpha amylase, which helps provide the plant with the energy it needs for rapid growth. While the shoots grow fast, root growth is repressed to save energy for the shoots. Responding to flooding takes a lot of energy and it becomes difficult to produce energy when your roots are underwater. Plants, like animals, use cellular respiration to produce energy in the form of ATP. Cellular respiration includes glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and oxidative phosphorylation. When there's no oxygen available, plants must switch to anaerobic respiration. This means energy will be produced via glycolysis and fermentation instead of oxidative phosphorylation. Unfortunately, this means the plant will produce 18 times less ATP for each molecule of sugar. In addition to producing less energy, fermentation results in toxic byproducts, including ethanol and lactate, although there are mechanisms in place to minimize the buildup of these compounds. Luckily, rice has a lot of starch to use for energy production, and it rations its ATP efficiently so that it can survive in flooded conditions for long periods of time. These features of rice set it apart from other crops that are not flood tolerant. Under the changeable weather condition now, some areas in the past, leads rainfall now, may also encounter the flooding. To the farmers, maybe they didn't plant flooding-resistant rice species at the beginning of the season. Then, unexpectedly, flooding is coming. In that situation, they need some agronomic method to reduce their loss, because they cannot just abandon the plants on their field and replace them with a resistant one. So they need some crops to make a living. When the situation is not so bad, they just need some moderate flooding agronomic measures. Most frequently, there are three steps as shown. First, clean the ditches and drain the water in time, and then wash the leaves and nourish seedlings, and then the top fly fertilization outside the roots. However, sometimes there is some extreme flooding. There is a lot of rainfall for a long time. The river and the groundwater levels are high, so it is hard to drain the water in time. In this situation, the plants need urgent rescue. After the rice is flooded, the ground is seriously damaged, and the leaves are dead and rotten, and the growth of the young ears is blocked. In this situation, they can mow the seedlings and allow them to regenerate. Second, pile up the soil. Third, apply fertilizer in time. Fourth, field management, keep the shallow water layer and the appropriate irrigation. Five, pasture control. Moisture after the flooding is good for pasture hatching. Rice has higher resistance to flooding. For example, there's a kind of rice called deep water rice. This rice can grow in the water even deeper than human body's height. As long as the leaves can stick out the water, they can grow. This is the reason why we choose rice to start our video. Because of the climate change, it is important to study flood stress. It can help develop flooded resistant varieties and it can help farms to reduce their loss if on their farms the varieties is not high resistant to the flooding. Thank you for watching our video.